VOR, ILS, NDB, DME, what's the difference? What are they? What do they do? Well in this video I'll give you a basic guide on all these navigates and how to use them to navigate your aircraft. So let's start out today with talking about the aircraft we're going to use and how we find these navigational aids. So to complete these flights today we're going to be using the Beechcraft Duke of which I have a video on. It's an awesome aircraft and is also equipped with basic old school style radios. However, if you're using an aircraft with the Garmin G1000 displays, you need to dial in the frequencies a bit differently as shown here. Also, I personally use a little of the nav map to fly plan, so that's what I'm going to be using today. But if you're on a fly plan using VORs, you can use SimBrief and select VOR only mode. There is also Sky Vector for fly planning, which all of which I will link in the description. Obviously, this shouldn't be used in real life as it's just a guide from Microsoft Flight Simulator. Finally, note that all navigation aids, except for the NDB, uses the VHF nav radio. Okay, with all that in mind, let's move on to the VOR. VOR, which stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Radio, is a common but slowly disappearing radio navigate around the world. There are actually also VORs with other navigates like Vortac and VOR DMEs. Starting out with the simple VOR. A VOR is a ground-based navigational aid that outputs two signals, a stationary signal and a directional signal, for all 360 degrees of the compass omnidirectional, which allows the aircraft to dial frequency of the VOR and select an inbound or outbound course to fly inbound or outbound to the VOR. So, let's say if you want to fly northeast of this VOR, you tune in the frequency, which in this case is 115.60, you set your HSI to 45 degrees, so northeast, and then fly towards the CDI. And once the CDI starts moving towards you, turn to intercept it. If you have the CDI in the middle, you're flying on the outbound or inbound course. That's pretty much a very simplified basic explanation on how to use a VOR. They were first used in 1937 and have gained lots of attraction in America and Europe. However, they are getting phased out slowly in the favour of RNAV GPS waypoints. VOR DME and Vortex use distance measuring equipment to be able to tell you on the DME receiver of your aircraft how far away the signal from the VOR is. Also note that the distance measuring equipment is sensitive to height. So it will tell you that you are your height away from the DME. For example, if you are cruising at 10,000 feet, and 10,000 feet in nautical miles is 1.6, so even when flying directly over the nav aid, it will say that I am 1.6 nautical miles away. ILS slash instrument landing system is the most common instrument approach in the world. ILS is made up of two systems, the localizer and the glide slope. The localizer gives lateral guidance to the aircraft. It works like a VOR but with more precision compared to a VOR. The glide slope gives vertical guidance to the aircraft. The glide slope guidance is shown in the GDS glide slope deviation scale. The GDS shows the position of the aircraft on the glide path. If the aircraft is below the glide path, then the glide slope pointer will be above the center. If the aircraft is above the glide path, then the glide slope pointer will be below the center of the GDS. The further away the glide slope pointer is from the center of the GDS represents that the aircraft is further away from the glide path. Both the localizer and glide slope are combined to make an ILS. So, if you keep the CDI in the center, for most airports you will be lined up with the runway. And if the glide slope indicator is in the middle, that means that you are on the glide path. Before flying an ILS approach, I recommend you check the airport's ILS chart that you are going to fly to. This is because some airports do not have the ILS lined up with their runway and some have a steeper approach angle. It is also good to check the decision height for the airport so you know when to go around or continue to land. If you need a free way to check an airport's charts, I recommend to use Airmate. To intercept the localizer of an ILS, you would intercept it like a VOR. You would tune in the ILS frequency and then set the HSI to the course of the localizer, of which can be found on a chart. Then fly towards the CDI until it starts moving. Then when it starts moving, you turn to intercept it. However, for a glide slope, it's very subjective. Usually a glide path is intercepted at 3000 feet and has a 3 degree glide path, but I recommend you check your ILS charts for the airport that you're flying to because it can change a lot. For example, this glide slope I am flying is intercepted at 2000 feet. Once you have the glide slope coming down towards the middle, you want to start a shallow descent, which for most general aviation aircraft is about 500 to 700 feet a minute. This is because you want to keep the glide slope pointer in the middle of the GDS. Note the corrections are likely going to be needed. If the glide slope pointer falls below the middle, then you are too high and you have to pitch down. And if the glide slope pointer is above the middle, then you are too low and need to add power to extend your glide. 
This all sounds really confusing, but it becomes intuitive when flying multiple ILSs. And this is why the best way to learn how to fly an ILS in a simulator is just to practice. Go out and have a try. It's also good to note that localizer approaches and ILS approaches are not equivalent. With an ILS approach having full guidance with a localizer and a glide slope, however, a localizer does not have vertical guidance from a glide slope. I'm going to quickly brief you on the NDB non directional beacon because it's not a very widely used nav aid and is slowly being decommissioned. The NDB is a nav aid that can only be used if an aircraft has an ADF, automatic direction finder. The NDB is a very basic form of navigation, where a radio beacon sends out a signal in all directions and then the ADF in an aircraft picks up the signal and points towards the NDB with an NDB needle. This allows the aircraft to fly directly to and from the beacon, however NDBs can have disturbances such as static which result in erroneous indications on the NDB needle. To use an NDB you dial on the frequency of the NDB on the ADF panel in the cockpit and then you fly towards where the arrow is pointing to go inbound into the NDB or you fly opposite to where the arrow is pointing to go to go outbound of the NDB. Lastly, the DME, distance measuring equipment, is another simple form of navigation and is usually combined with other forms of navigational equipment like VORs to make VOR DMEs, NDBs and ILSs. However, standalone DMEs do actually exist and as the name states, it measures the distance away from an aircraft and the DME station. I did explain this in the section where I talked about VORs, but basically, distance measuring equipment is used to tell you on the DME receiver of your aircraft how far away the signal from the DME is. So, if I am 15 nautical miles away from the DME, it will show you that I am in fact 15 nautical miles away from the DME. Also note that distance measuring equipment is sensitive to height, so it will tell you that you are your height away from the DME. For example, if we are cruising at 10,000 feet and 10,000 feet in nautical miles is 1.6, so even when flying directly over the DME, it will say that I am 1.6 nautical miles away. To use the DME, all you need to do is tune in the frequency of the selected DME within about 199 nautical miles and then you get the distance away from the DME. Before I get absurdly thrashed in the comment section, I just want to say that yes, I know I haven't gone into depth about all the navigates like the difference between Vortex and VOR DMEs, but you have to realise this is a beginner's guide and my first tutorial, but it was a pain to make with over 240 voice recordings attempts. And anyway, if you have found this video interesting or helpful, please subscribe to me as I'm trying to grow as a channel and like this video to get it on the algorithm. Thank you for watching. See ya.